Hey everybody, it's Courtney, and I am back with another video using the My Monthly Hero card kit for August 2018. Today I'm starting with a piece of this tone gray paper by Strathmore, and I'll be using the Unicorn White Pigment Ink by Hero Arts. This is a thinner paper, so just keep in mind that you're not going to be able to use this for a card base, and sometimes even a card panel without having another layer behind it. So I'm just picking out a few images here from the stamp set and I'm going to be stamping my images kind of scattered throughout the entire panel. I'm not really worried about going off the edge here because I know I'll be trimming down my panel in the end. This is a pigment ink so you want to make sure that you give it a few minutes to dry before you move on with your coloring. I'm going to be using polychromos color pencils here. I'll warn you now, I'm very new at these. I've been practicing a little bit, um, but I'm by no means an expert. So we're gonna keep the coloring pretty simple. I'll be using a variety of gray pencils and two brown pencils for the coffee inside the little cups, as well as the white pencil. And I will just be showing you two of the mugs here. I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me color all of them. So the first thing I did was take my white pencil here and basically just covered up the entire mug, the entire image. And I'm holding the pencil pretty far up and just kind of using this side because I'm using very, very light pressure here. Next, I'll move on to my darkest gray. My first intent was to keep this white outline on each of the images, but then realized it was going to be a little bit too hard to preserve that. So I ended up basically just tracing over it on either side and adding a little bit of my darkest gray, again, with pretty light hand, not as light as I did with the white, but it is, you know, I'm not pressing very hard because I want to be able to blend these out a little bit. My highlight will be in the center just as if we were coloring with Copics because this is a light around object. So you want the lightest part to be right there in the center. Once my darkest color was down, I moved on to my next darkest color, going over that dark area and then extending that out just as if we were coloring with Copics where our flicking would be, basically doing the same thing. I'm just coloring in little circles here again with pretty light pressure we can always go back and add more we you can't take it away once you press too hard and the paper is full of the wax or whatever these pencils are made of I'm like I said by no means an expert you're not going to be able to blend anymore so you want to kind of keep a light hand I'll go in with my next gray and extend that out a little bit further and then with my lightest gray, which is almost white, it just has a little bit of pigment to it. Once that's down, I will go back in with my white pencil and fill in that center and kind of blend out all of those different shades of gray. Now for this one, I did decide that I wanted my edges to be a little bit darker. So because I use a light hand, I could go back in and just add a little bit of that dark and blend that out with one of my mid-tone colors. For this next one, I'm starting off the same way. I am covering up the entire area with my white pencil with a very light hand and then moving on to my darkest gray. For the cup itself, I'm more or less doing the same thing as I did with the, that first mug, concentrating my darkest areas being on either side, small little circles, light pressure. And for the little saucer that is underneath it, now rem remember we're gonna lose our lines here from where we actually stamp the image. So you'll have to create the dimension yourself. This is almost like a no line coloring technique. So I am putting my shadows on either side of the edge of that saucer, I guess, where, where it's popping up there a little bit. And then there are lines within the image where the shadow would be 
where that cup is sitting on the saucer. So I'm just basically following those, just putting a little bit of my darkest color there. And then each time I come in and work my way down, I'll blend that out towards the edge a little bit more. So for my next darkest color, again, just extending those lines out a little bit on either side. And don't forget about behind the cup, behind like where the coffee is. Don't forget to color that part too. Doing the same thing with this little saucer and just extending those lines that the where the shadow is, where the cup is laying in it. And then moving on to my next two grays, doing the same thing as I did with that first mug. Now these mugs are different sizes, so make sure that you do preserve that highlight. If the cup is small, make sure your little circles or how far you're going out with your darkest color is minimal so that you can still have room to preserve that highlight. After my lightest gray, was down, I did go back in with my white pencil and covered up the entire area, blending all of those shades together and preserving that highlight right there in the center of the cup, as well as the center of the little lip of the saucer there. I did go ahead and color the rest of these mugs off camera but I did take two different browns and we're going to be coloring the coffee that's actually inside of these cups. I started with my lightest color and just went over the entire area again with a very light hand and light pressure. I added my darkest color on either side and then went back in with my lightest color to blend that out a little bit. I'm sharpening my pencils pretty often. You wanna make sure that you do have a good tip on, on the pencil, especially for these little tiny areas on these mugs. You can't really see the coffee very well, so you wanna make sure that you have a really good tip on your pencil. But I'm coloring the coffee all the same way, just putting a little bit of shading on either side and then going back in with my lightest color to blend that out. Now remember, you can go back in and add more color as long as you're using a light hand, but this is just a small area of the image itself that I really wasn't worried about getting too much dimension here. Once all of my coloring was done, I did go ahead and trim down my panel to four by five and a quarter. And then I'll take a piece of black cardstock and cut that down to just slightly larger than that. And this will be my panel for behind this, this piece of paper, just because it's, it's not very stable, it's not very thick. I'm gonna take this scrap piece here and I'm going to white heat emboss my sentiment from the stamp set from the card kit, treating my cardstock with an anti-static tool, then stamping my sentiment with Versamark ink trying to line that up the best I can so that I can cut this in an even strip once my heat embossing was done. I'm using Hero Arts white heat, white embossing powder here, and I'll go ahead and heat set that, then cut that down into a strip. To give it a little interest, I usually just take my scissors and just snip off one of the sides at an angle. And then I'll pop that up with some scotch foam tape right there in the center of my panel. I used a top folding white A2 size card base and just adhered this whole panel flat down to that card base and realized that I probably should have stamped another image there off to the bottom left. It's kind of plain down there. So in order to fill in that area, I just used some enamel accents by Ranger. These are very similar to like Nouveau drops. I have the entire, all of the colors. So 
I just squeeze a little bit out on a scrap piece of paper, make sure that there's no air bubbles, and then I just place those throughout the panel just to fill in some of those blank areas. And that is it for this one. Thank you guys so much for stopping by, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.